When we are talking about insecticides, we need to be clear about two things. First one is mode of entry and the next one is mode of action. Mode of entry means how the insecticide enters inside the system of insects. Based on how the insecticide enters inside the system of insect, there are two kind of insecticides. First one is contact insecticide, next one is the systemic insecticide. Contact insecticides kills the insect when they are coming in contact with them. For example, the insect coming in contact with the surface of the leaf where the insecticides are sprayed. It may be soil, leaf or any other surfaces where the insecticides are sprayed. Examples for such insecticides are pyrethroids, carbaryl and acephate. The next kind is systemic insecticides. In order to get into the system of insect, it needs to get inside the plant system first. These kind of insecticides are mostly used for the control of sucking pests, where the contact insecticides are ineffective. Examples for these chemicals are imidacloprid and thiamethoxone. Next one we are concentrating is mode of action. How the insecticide kills the insect after entering inside the system of insect is called mode of action. There are various ways by which insecticide kills an insect. Most important target area of majority of the insecticides are nervous system. Various parts of nervous system are modified, inhibited or overstimulated to change the normal function of nervous system which ultimately leads to the death of an insect. So, it will be easier if we understand the normal functioning of nervous system before getting inside the mode of action of insecticides. The nervous system coordinates all the activities inside the organism. Like most other arthropods, insects have a relatively simple central nervous system with two important parts, brain and ventral nerve cord. Brain is located dorsally on the head. It is linked to the ventral nerve cord that consists of a paired segmental ganglia running along the ventral midline of the thorax and abdomen. Ganglias are simply accumulation of neurons for various functions. Ganglia within each segments are linked to one another by a short medial nerve called as commissure and also joined by intersegmental connectives to ganglia in adjacent body segments. In general, the central nervous system is rather ladder-like in appearance. Commissures are the rungs of the ladder and intersegmental connectives are the rails. Insect nervous system has a network of specialized cells called as neurons that serve as an information highway within the body. Each neuron cell has four major parts in them. Dendrites cell body, axon and terminal arborization. Dendrites receives information or impulse from nearby neuron or sensory organ and cell body analyzes that information. Later, it shifts that information in the way of impulse to the axon which later transmits to the next neuron through terminal arborization. By this way, the neuron contacts the electrical impulse or information. So, we can think of neuron with two portions. First one is analog portion where the cell body and dendrites are there which receives the information from the neuron that are nearby which may be the positive or negative information. After the analysis is done, the information is passed to the digital portion which is having axon on the terminal arborization. We will see deep insights into the nervous system when we study about the insect physiology. Now let us focus on fundamental areas of nervous system so that we better understand the insecticides mode of action. Neuron is getting information from dendrites and cell body. And also, as they are connected to the other neuron based on summation of all the information that is received, the decision is taken either to do the action or stop the action. These cells generate electrical impulses otherwise called as action potential that travel as waves of depolarization along the cell membrane. So what is action potential? We will see about it just in a minute.
there are totally three different potentials the resting potential action potential and the other one is greater potential you will see about resting potential and action potential in this class the greater potential is also important but as this class is about the basic understanding we will skip this for now so what is potential potential in physics means there is a separation of two charge take the battery of 8 volt for example it is having potential that means there is a separation of charge within the battery itself also it means it is having potential to work when they are coming in contact with each other now let's take neurons cross section there is also resting potential that means there is also separation of charges across the membrane on the surface of the neuron when we measure it it is around minus 70 millivolt when we look into the graph of the action potential it is something like this on the either side of action potential we can see that the neuron is at rest it does not mean that it does not need any energy to do that let's zoom into the surface of the neuron and see what's going on there are lots of potassium ions inside and very few in the outside whereas while we are looking at the sodium and chloride ions they are more on the outside whereas less inside but still there is no potential or separation of charges to understand let's remove all the sodium ions and focus on potassium ions because it is potassium and the permeability of potassium that is playing role in the potential when we look into it there is a leak channel which allows potassium to move out why or where this potassium goes it is because of the chemical gradient what is gradient it is simply the imbalance as nature always like to move towards the balance as there is more potassium ions inside and less outside when the channel opens potassium automatically moves from the more inside to the lesser outside when we see as yes, the potassium moves out now there is a separation of charge that is positive in the outside and negative on the inside and also we can see another gradient arrival that is electrical gradient after some times as there are more positive outside those ions will ripple with each other they are going to move towards the negative charge that is inside as we can also see when more potassium releases electric charges also increases eventually potassium will flow back in when we see the simulation of that this will look something like this when we see the movement of potassium through potassium leak channel and there is also another channel that is sodium leak channel which does the same job as potassium leak channel as it is going to allow sodium ions inside here we can see chlorine and proteins are not moving because there is no channel for them to move so what happens if all the potassium moves out because it is just a leak channel to maintain that there is another pump that is called sodium potassium pump which is working by using the energy that is ATP but when we are comparing it with the other leak channels like sodium and potassium leak channel they will work with the gradient without using any energy this sodium potassium pump moves out three sodium ions for every two potassium ions this pump keeps up with sodium flowing in and potassium flowing out so that's how our resting potential of minus 70 millivolt is established because there is separation of ions inside and outside and different chemical gradient is established so difference in the charge creates resting potential name is resting but it requires energy to do that this resting potential will lead to action potential now here we can see the potassium and sodium leak channels and the another important channel that is sodium voltage gated channel it has polypeptide ball on the bottom 
when the voltage reaches minus 55 millivolt it opens up wide and allows huge amount of sodium inside when the voltage moves away from minus 55 millivolt it closes like that there is also another voltage gated channel that is potassium voltage gated channel opens when the voltage become around 30 millivolt that is plus 30 millivolt allows only potassium outside so once we hit that minus 55 millivolt all the sodium voltage gated channel opens up wide and allows sodium ions inside the depolarization of the neuron happens and the voltage increases eventually when we reach to 30 millivolt now the voltage gated potassium channels gets activated and the sodium channels inactivated leading to the repolarization that means the flow of potassium outside the neuron happens and gets into the undershoot that is voltage gets really low now the leak channels will be activated and re-establish the minus 70 millivolt that is our resting potential waiting for another action potential or any electrical impulse or any information from the sensory organs let us see that in motion sodium pumps opens and sodium enters inside after reaching 30 millivolt potassium pump opens re-establishing the action potential Putting in graph, sodium pump opens, creates the depolarization. Then, when the potassium pumps opens, the repolarization happens, leading to the undershoot, and then back to the resting potential. We have seen only one cross section of neuron cell. How does the information move down to the whole nervous system? This is how it does repolarization depolarization and to the next segment and to the next and to the next by this the action potential is transferred throughout the system when we see that closely again after hitting the threshold sodium channels will wide open letting sodium ions inside they will move away from each other as they are positively charged as they are repelling each other this will open the next nearby sodium channel in the right side why it can't move to the left because in the left the repolarization is going on this way it will pass throughout the axon so far we have talked about two potential that is resting potential which is created due to the permeability of different ions and the action potential which is caused due to the depolarization and repolarization of the neurons there is a gap between two neuron cells that is called as synapsis so how does the information in the form of electrical impulse passes to the next neuron as there is a gap or synapse is present between the two neurons axon potential is going to move with axon and release the neurotransmitters to the receptors of the next neurons nearby there is also another type of synapse which is electrical synapse in which the information is transferred without any chemical neurotransmitters it is faster but the problem is it is not having enough control like the synaptic transfer as it is also not important in our case with regards to the insecticide mode of action let's look into the chemical synapse alone the terminal arborization of the neuron in which the information in the form of electrical pulse comes in the postsynaptic neuron is the dendrite of the next neuron that is nearby receives the information and the gap between presynaptic neuron and postsynaptic neuron is called as synaptic cleft and also we must remember that these structures are not floating around there are structures which holds them in the position inside the presynaptic neuron at the end there are presynaptic vesicles which holds the neurotransmitters once the action potential reaches presynaptic area depolarization happens on the area opening up the calcium gated voltage channel and then calcium ions moves with the gradient that is towards inside they will connect with the chemicals in the surface of the vesicles 
activating the proteins on the surface will allow them to connect to the other receptors in the presynaptic side which will allow the vesicles to merge. The membrane of the postsynaptic neuron is differentiated into different kinds of receptors which are regulated by the neurotransmitter chemical released from the presynaptic neuron. There are various kinds of neurotransmitters either to stop or stop the action. In our case, let us take acetylcholine, the most common neurotransmitter in insect and human to start any action. So, the process goes like that. Action potential reaches the presynaptic membrane, releasing the calcium ions, merging with the vesicles of the neurotransmitters, acting them and releasing them into the synaptic cleft. The neurotransmitters, in our case the acetylcholine, diffuses in the synaptic cleft and binds with its receptors on the ion channel of the postsynaptic membrane. The receptor binding causes the ion channel to open. Cations such as sodium ions enters inside along the gradient through the open ion channel, causing the depolarization in the postsynaptic membrane. If the depolarization is sufficiently higher, it will stimulate new frequency of action potential which will be transferred to the next neuron. The neurotransmitter acetylcholine is chemically degraded by acetylcholine esterase located in the synapse. Clavage of the acetylcholine causes the ion channels to close. Synaptic membrane of the postsynaptic neuron then return to its resting membrane potential. As we already discussed, there are different kinds of neurotransmitters, either to start the action or stop the action. If the neurotransmitter is for activation, it may let sodium ions inside, leading to the depolarization and the impulse passes. If it is to inhibit the action, it will let potassium out or the chlorine ions inside. Then the impulse will not pass and the process stops. There are various messages coming from different neurons, maybe positive or negative. Summation of the total message will be transferred to the axon. If it is above the action potential, terminal but Calcium buds will open, then neurotransmitters are released. So, this is the way how the nervous system of insect works. In the next class, let us understand how the nervous system is exploited by the various insecticides.